Okay, okay. So let, let's 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 concentrate. Okay. So I want to show you. We talk about the dumpers. I show you how uh, they behave. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you uh, how they work. There is one thing I want to show you again. So uh, I want to go back and tell you again the three functions of the dumpers. Three functions of the dumpers. So let's go back here. Whoops. We've missed our uh, web page here. Um, okay. Okay. So three. So dumpers have three main functions, and I'm pretty sure you guys are laughing right now. What is that? The presentation. It is so important that I want to show you, you know, written the stuff. You really need to understand this because, as I said. And you are right, guys, complaining. It is hard stuff, complicated to clear this in your mind. If you have this clear in your mind, then slowly, with experience, you will start, you know, to doing changes and understanding what is happening. If it's not clear in your mind, then doesn't doesn't matter. I mean, you could, you will do changes, but you won't be certain on what those changes do, and you might have even placebo uh, effects while you're driving and think one thing while it happens another. So, dumpers have three main functions. Number one, they control the frequency of the springs. Okay, so that's the main function of the dumpers. They control the frequency of the springs. We said that, you know, the springs oscillate, all right, like this, okay, and uh, the dumpers limit the oscillations and eliminate them as they move on in time, okay. And that's very important because, as I show you, if you're not controlling the oscillation of the springs and, as such, the suspension, then at some point your tires will lose contact or load uh, with, you know, uh, with with the surface, uh, with the asphalt, and that means they will slide. Okay, so you need to control the oscillations of the springs uh, to control the contact of the tire and to control the body movement so this is the first thing now mainly you control this with the fast dampers okay so mainly when you hit bumps when you hit curbs uh, the stiffer the fast uh, damper the more you control the oscillations and you stop the oscillation uh, which is something that we want um, so some people uh, think, and it was the case, you know, uh, as a rule of thumb, that you you need uh, soft bump, soft uh, bump stiffness when it gets, you know, the heat from the curb, so that it can absorb, and then you need very stiff um, extension, very, very stiff rebound, so that it doesn't bounce back and jumps. Okay. This is true, but up to a point, because if your bump is very soft, then it will move the suspension way too much, okay? And it will compress the spring way too much, which means a, a spring that is more compressed also has much more energy to release. And that energy, it's difficult to, to control even with a very stiff damping in rebound. So, yes, you need a relatively soft, fast bump, okay? But not too much. Don't overdo it, because if you overdo it, then, again, the, uh, the spring will compress way, way too, too far, and you're going to have a spring with lots of energy uh, inside it. Okay. So, second function of the dumpers. It controls the speed of the weight transfer. Now this this is incredibly uh, incredibly complicated to grasp to understand and incredibly uh, important to understand. So what that means? So first of all, weight transfer. Okay. Now you know that when we create uh, slip on the tires, uh, 
it generates you know grip and that makes the tire change and the whole car change direction okay now obviously the more you load the tire the more grip it generates up to a point because we have the load sensitivity issues but let's leave that aside for a moment let's not let's not talk about load sensitivity for now so let's say simplistically that you know you load the tire with with weight with force okay and you slide it a little bit and this generates grip and the more you load it the more grip you generate again simplicity um now if you load your tire progressively, so let's say that my hand is, is the tire, no? So I start loading my hand and it generates, if I want to keep my hand straight, it generates force to keep straight. So I load it slowly like this and I can, you know, handle you know, the force uh, and I can generate more force, let's say grip, okay, uh, to handle the situation. Uh, so that's a slow loading. Slow loading, I can handle. If I do this fast, it's not easy to, to control the, the situation. If I do a very fast force apply, it's very difficult to counteract. Now, this is the exact th same thing that happens with the tires. If you put lots of load on the tire, it will generate grip, but if this loading of the tire, this weight transfer to the tire is very fast, then the tire will start to slide because it cannot handle the very fast um, loading of itself. So that's why you know that by experience, if you go into the turn a bit gradually, you know, you go, you go like that, you go like that gradually, the tires can handle the loading the weight transfer and generate grip and you can make the turn but if you do this if you do bam like that that it's not going to work and you can try this for example do a turn well you know one of the short turns uh actually let's demonstrate this okay so we can do a, a little bit of driving uh, just a tiny little bit of driving so um let's go back to um to the car and just demonstrating at the first at the second turn easier as that so again hope you guys can see all right so we go out I'm not gonna do a complete lap just you know the second turn here so we go there brake and we turn you see up to here and the car does the turn so my turning goes I had to turn my steering wheel more or less here okay good I did it gradually and the car did the turn without any issues at all great let's do the same but this time let's be as aggressive as possible I mean really really fast okay let's see what happens So, exact same conditions, same setup, car, uh, tires are cold, etc, etc. Right? Okay, brake. I didn't do it well, but already you saw that I'm, um, I was, you know, outside. But let's, let's do it properly. Let's do it one more time so you can see it better. Try it again. Okay, let's do it better this time. Break. And um, I, I just went straight, okay? So why is this happening? As we said, it is happening because uh, the, the loading of the tire was so violent and so fast it was a very fast 
weight transfer at very fast loading of the tire, which um, made made the tire not able to generate grip and turn the car. Now, what's out? By weight transfer, I do not mean um, the body roll. I'm not saying that's not weight transfer. Yes, it does transfer a little bit of weight, but that's not the uh, most the, the big percent of weight transfer. Weight transfer is you know from the forces. It's inertia transferring. It's from the forces generating to turn. When you're turning, okay, you create forces, and those forces move the load on the outside tires. The body roll, okay, obviously moves the center of gravity a tiny little bit, and as a result, loads the tires a tiny little bit. But in a car that you know rolls like one degree of roll, two degrees of roll, maybe, maybe, uh, this kind of weight transfer is around 50 kilos, 40 kilos. Uh, it is important. But it's not the 300 kilos and 400 kilos and 600 kilos that you get from the actual, you know, lateral acceleration. This is the weight transfer, the lateral acceleration that you get, or the longitudinal acceleration in terms of you know, acceleration or uh, deceleration. So this is the weight transfer. So how do the dampers control the speed of weight transfer? Now that's that's difficult to understand. Let's see if the honey can help us. Now, um, actually, if I have a very soft spring, remember? Soft spring, okay? Soft spring. Now, I give some force, okay? But the force is you see how my spoon goes into roll like that okay it moves around so my hand first goes like this and then the spoon follows okay so look at that again you see okay okay so again my hand moves gives the actual force and then the spoon moves for quite some time. It moves behind. Okay. This means that at the bottom, the force I give here is not um, is not transmitted directly instantly. It takes some time to transmit the photon because the suspension, in that case the spoon, has movement. It can move around before transmitting the force. At the bottom of the spoon. Okay, so the suspension, if that was the suspension, can move around before transmitting the load to the tires. So soft damping means that the weight transfer is slower to uh, the dampers. Maybe it's higher because it moves more, but it is slower, and we care about the, the velocity of the weight transfer. So slower weight transfer, because of the soft damper, means that the tire has more time to react and, you know, find grip. Okay? Now, stiff damping. Now, stiff damping, now, it means that the moment I, I move, already I get force here and I cannot move it. Now, it's true that if I keep going, eventually it will arrive, but... The power that I give here, the force that I give here, is practically instantly arrives down here, and I can feel it on on my on my uh, uh, on my hand because there is lots of resistance. Okay. So again, stiff means that the resistance is instant, which means that the weight transfer is very fast. the The suspension doesn't have to move; it moves a little bit instantly gets stopped by the damping and all the white transfer goes directly down to the tires very very fast indeed so that means that with a stiff 
dumping, the weight transfer is much faster. Stiff damper, much faster weight, weight transfer. Where again, not how much weight transfer happens, but how fast the weight transfer happens. Slow damping, slow weight transfer. Uh, sorry, soft damping, slow weight transfer. Stiff damping, fast weight transfer. Now, what does that mean, fast uh, weight transfer? It means that the car reacts much faster on our inputs, but also can slide faster if our inputs are not precise. So the car is more precise, the car is faster in reactions, and we saw that at the start of our live stream. Uh, but it will slide eventually if you keep doing it, if you are not, you know, smooth and precise with your uh, with your um, movements. So this is it. This is the whole situation. So with the dumpers, you can control the speed of the weight transfer, and as such, you can have the car more precise, but skittish, slides around, moves around, or less precise but sluggish and easier to control okay okay so i hope this is clear i know it's complicated go through it read it again uh, sorry watch it again and I, I hope that you can understand it and finally three control now that happens control the aerodynamic platform this happens on the modern cars with tons of aerodynamic and very pitch sensitive situations. So, we explained and demonstrated in the previous live streams how the aerodynamic platform, so the rake, the roll, the pitch of the car, uh, is extremely important for the handling of the car. Uh, even tiny changes in the pitch of the car. Uh, or the role of the car uh, influence influence greatly the handling of the car. So, what can we do with the with the dumpers? So, in the modern cars, the dumpers get extremely stiff, especially on the slow speeds. On the slow speeds, and we saw that here, right? On the slow speeds here, the dumpers are extremely stiff. Uh, this is an extremely stiff line. We're talking stiffness like, you know, 30, 40 Newton millimeters. Uh, so it's absurd. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, why, is this, why is this needed on those cars? Because uh, pitch, pitch is when you are, you know, braking and the nose goes down and the rear goes up. Okay, this is pitch. This, this is the pitch of the car. Okay. I don't have the uh, little car here. But pitch is, you know, you brake and the nose goes down and the rear goes up. Now, in this situation, and I'm explaining this because uh, a guy asked uh, in the chat. So in this situation, uh, even one or two millimeters are extremely, extremely important in the change of the handling of the car. Please go back to the previous live streams and check the aerodynamic uh, influence uh, in uh, the handling of the car. It's number one thing, number one thing. So with very stiff dumping, very stiff dumping, uh, we can control the immediate uh, body movement of the car. Uh, so we don't let the car instantly, you know, go into high uh, roll uh, or high pitch values. And by doing that, we create a car that is stays more flat, okay? Uh, and obviously, staying more flat, it's more uh, stable aerodynamically and let us, you know, control better and doesn't move around the balance of the car and we can attack better the turns. Also gives you much more stability and precision so that you know what you're doing is what you, you're trying to, to do, is what you get back from, from the car. So, there you have it. You have three main functions of the dumpers. Again, frequency of the springs, okay? Speed of weight transfer and control of our dynamic platform.
So now that we know all those three things, how do we change the dampers for different uh, engine layouts? Well, think about it. If the engine is at the front, it means you have more weight at the front. And so more weight means that uh, it will create larger oscillations on, the, on your springs. And if you want to control those larger oscillations that you can see here, for example, okay, if you want to control this kind of uh, larger oscillations, you need uh, stiffer springs. Stiffer springs means that you're going to have smaller oscillations but higher frequency. Again, problems. So you need stiffer damping at the front of the car. Okay. If you have mid-engine car or rear-engine car, it means that you have more weight at the back, okay, which means, again, you have higher oscillations. To control the oscillations, you put stiffer springs, for example, but you're going to have higher frequency of oscillations. So you need stiffer springs to control uh, this kind of oscillations uh, and eventually have something, you know, like this, uh, so you, you control the dumping like that and the oscillations like that. Now, we also said that the aerodynamic uh, function of the dumping is very important, so at some situations you're going to need to have a very, very stiff uh, dumping to have this kind of control. So instead of you know, having oscillations, you don't get oscillations at all, but you control the initial movement, the pitch, uh, even with overdumping, uh, is limited, so you don't get as stiff. Uh, you can you can use a little bit of softer springs that can react better on on you know the curbs and the bumps maybe, but the very stiff, slow uh, damping will control the body movement, and then you have a bit softer, fast damping that let uh, it control, you know, uh, the, the spring when you hit a curb or a bump, all right? So, this is all about dumping. Uh, this is all I have to, to talk about tonight. Let me have a look again at the chat. Let's see if you guys have any particular questions. Uh, let's see. All right, well, I... People are happy about that. I, I, I'm honest, guys. I was really scared about this live stream tonight uh, because I know it is a very difficult argument to deal with. Uh, I'm honest about it. I also have problems to understand what I have to do. I'm doing trial and errors. I'm using a little bit of Motic. I'm trying to understand. Yes, there are mathematical things you can do, but you know, when you are there and you want to do something fast, it's not. You can always have some solution like this. Um, I, I am not a proper telemetrist. I mean, I've seen people doing, you know, amazing stuff with the telemetry. Uh, but usually, they have an engineer that does only dumping, you know, in in big teams. That, so this is how important dumping is. Um, so I, I hope you guys enjoyed it.